And we are back. Cautious Optimistic is here. Season 2, Episode 1. Uh, what a feeling. I'm joined by Liam. Uh, none of the other lads around this evening, unfortunately. <laughs> but we do have, it's me and Liam, and we are going to be discussing everything. So much to discuss tonight on the show. Uh, the season's, what, only two days out. Um, absolutely cannot wait. Liam, how are you doing? Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, really looking forward to this. Getting back stuck in, you know, for the new season. Really excited about this season. I don't know why. It's just obviously with a lot of outgoings, incoming as well. Got in like yeah. the like newcomers then coming up. Um, should be an interesting season. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I cannot wait for it myself. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot tonight, including stadium developments. We're going to be looking at um, our season predictions. We're going to, I'm going to have my Premier Division League title prediction video out tomorrow evening. That will land tomorrow evening. Um, but we're going to be doing running through like our predictions for league winners, FAI Cup top goal scorers, all that stuff in this show. Uh, we're going to be doing our game week one predictions, of course. We are back with our with our uh, league tables uh, for our predictions. So uh, we actually didn't finish it off last year. I think I finished out on top, but we didn't finish it off. So I won't claim it as a win. Um, we'll have to see it through to the end this time around. But um, and we'll also have our, our Irish player abroad segment as well, as we always will for for the whole um, for the whole season. But yeah, Liam, we'll start off with you. Um, I know you have a bit, you've, Coming into a new role, uh, coming into the 2022 season with an LOI club. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so obviously coming off the back of finishing our Masters, obviously we did a Masters together. Um, I did a thesis then on trying to, like, the effects of social media web-based platforms uh, and the effect, pretty much the effect it has on LOI clubs and in on then also then on the back of that main question, I was looking at how LOI clubs can then improve engagement um, and fan community really and in, in just improve on overall really uh, get more yeah. fans to games uh, improve the league overall so I kind of was very keen then to get stuck in my hands dirty then with a LOI club I was kind of looking around on a social media kind of all over the the websites everything like that and I, I actually came across uh, Longford Town were looking for a uh, few media volunteers everything like that um so i got in touch then with james donnelly the the main fella who's running the he's a chief operator gave him a quick email everything like that um and since then yeah i've been welcomed in with open arms like the players the players i met the players i've met the coaching staff and obviously the media team and even the fans on social media they've been great and um, it seems like a really great club uh really looking forward to making some engaging content um good plans in the works um and yeah looking forward to seeing we have a lot of uh new players but very very optimistic for the new season cautiously optimistic you know <laughs> yeah so you're long for town plan now anyway ah <laughs> uh, yeah it's good it's good to it is very good um it is it's just nice to be involved like um as a fan as a fan helping out the club um there's a lot of stuff that you don't see as a fan so it's kind of taken back to see how much work actually goes into a club and how a club's run it's uh interesting to see definitely it's yeah 100 percent. yeah i yeah, say it's, it's it's crazy because obviously you have a little bit of experience just doing a few bits and pieces for just the socials for loi fan tv but i'd say it's a whole different level like working with a football club like i say that's it's so different like yeah like um it is it, it was a bit, a bit surreal the first day i went uh yeah. to the friendly uh longford and uh bows um it's a bit taken aback at how like just professional everything is done like and and then the thought that goes into it a lot of time um yeah and all the lads i have to say all the media lads are all adding stuff to the table i just see a comment here coming in along for the great for social media activity like there's they are very 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 as i say as i said to them just earlier on um they really are a premier premier kind of Elite Division kind of immediate that. Yeah, man. Yeah. at that the players I think there's some I don't know how <laughs> how some of the players aren't at a premier team to be honest with the quality that they're showing at the moment but yeah I'm looking forward to and hopefully we can push for promotion 100% 100% best luck with the new role she says as well how are things everyone saying hello how are we good to be back lads thanks for tuning in it is much much appreciated and um, if you can drop a like on the stream guys if you're if you do want to enjoy it and, and do subscribe if you're new around here as well all your support is much much appreciated but we'll jump in uh great to hear about the longford town role name and, and best of luck with that this season i'm sure you'll you'll smash it and uh, hopefully longford have, have a great campaign as well and um, 
So we'll jump into just talking about there's been so much news recently on the stadium developments. Um looking first maybe at Daily Mount, uh Dan Lambert has come out recently and said that he hopes it's going to be 2026. Um that's when we can expect it to 6,000 capacity daily mount. Um, so yeah, big, the big thing in daily mount's favor, according to Dan, is that nobody is against it. All the political parties support it. The residents group support it. And um, it's going to come down to that funding decision. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's all looking good. 2026 as well, not a million miles away. And, and in terms of like the whole European, just this, in terms of this, John, we are going for the European uh, yeah. to share the host the Euro- European Cup, whatever uh, the Euro- Euros. Um, I think we need to focus on our own our, on ourselves first. Get get the stadium sorted. And um, Bose is only the start. There's so many more stadiums. We'll, we'll touch on in a minute. But there's so many stadiums we need to sort out. We need to sort out our own, get our own house in order before we can look to start hosting tournaments and stuff. Don't we really? Yeah, I honestly agree with you there. Um, it's a bit frustrating. We kind of just feel like we're just signing up for the sake of signing up, obviously, because England are looking to kind of somewhat help us. But you know what I mean? <laughs> we're not really adding to it, if you ask me. Um, I really feel yeah. like even when we do go to Bows, like we LOI Fan TV or everything like that, you just sit, you're sitting in the Jody stand, but you're looking over at all them, like that standing section. You know what I mean? And a lot of the games in the Jody stand are sold out like um so they yeah. and there seems to be I don't know if it's just me but I've seen this year there seems to be a lot more hype around the restart of the se- of the new year of the new season um yeah so it is good to see that they're kind of putting plans in place to redevelop the stadiums because they 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 really do need the work done to them 100% 100% Dan Lambert also touched on um on the uh, Save Talk a Park campaign, he said that uh, the Daily Ma- the Save Talk a Park campaign uh, will not put plans to redevelop Daily Mount at risk. So I think part of the initial plan was that uh, the t- both clubs would obviously be playing and talk while Daily Mount's getting redeveloped, and then they'd be moving to to Daily Mount. And after that, so yeah, it's it's good. I think uh, actually Save Talk a Park came out. They have an Instagram page. They came out today and said that we welcome the comment from the Bose chief operating officer and um, saying that talk park would have uh, saving talk park would have uh, no effect on the redevelopment um and it's, it's good to see that i suppose like in terms of dan lambert coming out and kind of showing some sort of support for the the save talk park campaign because i think the club the country needs more stadiums not less and um, i think i think having talk about it's such a such a historic ground been there as a kid growing up myself i just love it to bits and i seen it destroyed and, and having to play shells as home games and, and daily events wouldn't be the same at all yeah, it definitely, it definitely would kind of decrease kind of um, the whole spectacle, really. Uh, even like we obviously have been there, Talca Park. Um, it's a real, like it's real close. You get a real feel for it when you go in. Um, similar enough, I know I probably got hate for this, but it's similar enough feeling when I go to the Jody stand to when I go to Talca Park um, in terms of atmosphere, everything like that. It'd be a real shame to see it actually knocked down. But it, then again, I've seen... Um, a tweet there this evening saying that um for the the game against St Pat's that uh some of the stand over the, the where they walk out the tunnel is closed. I don't know why that is um, but yeah, uh, yeah. it's closed last year as well because um I think it's like a health and safety issue. I think there was like some sort of problem. That's that's the new stand as well. That was built yeah. most recently as well, but it must have been like cowboy builders or something with that because uh, that's like the newest stand and it's it's not you can't it's not safe safe to sit in it, which is such a shame because it was a great little uh, stand as well. Um. So yeah, even for the games like Pats, you want to have kind of the whole stadium that kind of surrounded by fans. That's what you want for the whole spectacle of it. It's crap having a stand behind the goal, kind of empty and and crap look, crappy looking. Like it's just it doesn't add to, especially on RT as well. You want to make it look as uh, visually pleasing as possible for for the, maybe the neutral fan who who's thinking about going to a game and stuff like that as well. So um, yeah, it is definitely a shame about the new stands in Talker Park. And if Talker Park is to be saved, you would love to see some plans put in place to to kind of redevelop it a little bit as well and and try and do it up a bit as well because some of the seats and stuff are kind of falling apart and everything as well so yeah definitely something to look at i think and hopefully as, as a shells fan anyway uh talk of park is is going to be uh saved anyway and the campaign is still running strong so hopefully i think over a thousand signatures i saw recently so hopefully that can have some sort of an impact Um a bit of a bit of a shame to see that Derry city stadium development has been put on hold um 
a multi-million pound scheme to complete the next phase of Dare City Stadium has been put on hold following the collapse of Northern Ireland's power sharing executive. The communities minister has said um, Sinn Féin's Deirdre Hargi told the Northern Ireland Assembly on Monday that the sub-regional programme for local football had been shelved because without executive monies, the plant was no longer able to progress, which is a huge, huge shame. Uh, disappointing for Dairy City fans. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's a shame because there's a lot of positive news in terms of in terms of the grounds at the moment and that's that's definitely a shame is the for dairy especially a club that seems to be going in the right direction as well absolutely like the money that's been pumped into it and even like the signings this year that we'll probably touch on later um that's a bit of a knock in the teeth really kicking the teeth even um i do think as dairy kind of progress over the next few years there'll be a, there'll be a definitely more of a need to get them to stands up more so then than now um, so that could yeah. kind of come back uh, and hopefully for the league as well that that kind of that uh, decision can be looked at again in the future and kind of be turned around for the benefit of the league as well because obviously with all these redevelopment plans it's going to benefit the league just as much uh, as the clubs themselves 100% 100% yeah um, kind of the final thing in terms of the stadiums then we'll touch on is that League of Ireland clubs including your boys Longford actually uh, have welcomed <laughs> sport capital grants uh, some of which up, up to 300,000 euro that will go towards crucial infrastructure training ground and stadium development work uh, the clubs include Bohemians Finharps Ligo Bray Cove Longford Drogheda and Athlone um, which is brilliant news as well that, that all those clubs are are, uh, are getting a few bob to, to help help them Absolutely, like even the like progress in the facilities that the lads can train at, everything like that, it'll all come back to help help the overall league. Um, hopefully, yeah, it's just, yeah, obviously Derry, as us is saying here, Derry don't really need a development yet, but in the future they probably will. And it's all about getting more fans towards the game, towards the League of Ireland, support your local club. So hopefully in a few years' time, I can see the league kind of, really progressing and there being more of a demand for tickets and more of a demand for these new uh, developments or whatever it's a new stand new new seating uh be really go good to see yeah 100 100 percent. yeah in terms of uh what i was saying there as well because it's done finn harps i know which is a finn harps fan uh i think they have actually a whole new site ready to go to build a new stadium is that i think that's yeah. correct isn't it um so yeah i think that's definitely from, from his point of view what what needs to be looked at first, maybe before Derry City, which is a fair point as well. Because you kind of have to, you can't just help certain clubs. You have to try and help everybody. So it is, it is a tricky one, really. In fairness, uh, in terms of looking at it from that perspective, because you need to, need to, you can't be kind of picking and choosing who to, who to support really. Um, so then we will move on to what Bohemians uh, have been talking about because they've called on League of Ireland clubs to unite, actually, uh, in a bid to end the loss of talent to the UK for tiny fees. I think this is something that every League of Ireland supporter can get behind, in fairness. We recently talked to Johnny Kenny on the channel, uh, Sligo Rovers, former Sligo Rovers forward, moved to Celtic for a fee in the region of 150000 Um Obviously, that's like compared to some some players that have left for free and stuff, it's not bad. Like It's, it's a decent figure, but for a player of his ability, 18 years of age, top goal scorer for, for Sligo last season, He's worth more than that, and yeah, it's just like, it's a case of um, trying to get players on contracts and stuff. It's, it's it's it is a tricky one, I know, in certain situations, but I think it, it needs to kind of be something that's definitely looked at. I know St. Pat's have kind of come out with the whole James Banquet thing; they dealt with that really well from Udinese. They got a great figure for him, so it is something that needs to be looked at, though. I think, isn't it? Oh, well, without a doubt. Like I still can't get over the fact that Celtic only got Kenny for one hundred and fifty. 50k really like he scored what 11 goals he's only 18 there's so much potential there with him even like a even a ross from uh bows like you know what I mean? but yeah. they they only got a Penis, compensation even like um yeah they only got compensation yeah. really from that deal which is and then georgie kelly um obviously dan o'reilly there's so many like dan cleary you know what i mean there's just so many players that went abroad yeah, this year. list goes on uh have they really should be getting more more money for them the LOI clubs i know the georgie kelly one's tricky because i know um that was kind of his first real kind of 
unbelievable season in the league around. I know he's been good at UCD in the past and stuff, but in terms of really standing out in the Premier Division, that was his first kind of time, I suppose. And if you're given a, a striker that's maybe not stood out in the past two and three year deals and he's kind of flops, then you're kind of stuck with that. Whereas if you give him a one year deal and then he does really well. So it's it's a hard one to try and judge for clubs at times, in fairness, especially clubs that, that might be blessed with the bit biggest budgets and things like that as well. So it is, it is definitely a tricky one, but um, yeah, especially with the younger players, the teenagers and stuff as well, with the ones that are going to go on to be superstars and Irish internationals. It is definitely something that, that has to be looked at. And I suppose Bows are probably in that situation where they're they, that link with St. Kevin's boys. So they're in that unique position where they're they're getting all the best talent from Dublin. So they're going to be ones pushing for this the most, probably, you'd imagine. In terms of, um, obviously, there is still, like, the likes of Sligo, I think, t- uh, managed to tie down uh, Ed McGinty to a two-year deal, maybe a longer deal. Um, should they start doing, like... The ones that are kind of the youth prospects, could they easily start trying to get them to longer contracts? Because I know, like Dawson Devoy and everything like that, he's obviously staying with Bose this season, but that's kind of just a matter of time before he really goes abroad. But yeah. will, how much money yeah. will Bose get from? You know what I mean? Well I, well, I think he's one where I think this is his last year of his contract, I think, isn't it? He's not going to sign a new deal. You wouldn't think, like, you'd be very surprised to see that. I think what well, a two year deal before last season, so um. Yeah, I, t- I think uh, I think the Dawson the Boy one is a case of I think Bose have to accept that he's he's there for the season and that um that he's either gonna lose him for nothing really to be fair. But I think I think in, in but that situation I think Bowes will be grateful for that, especially losing Keith Buckley and stuff as well. They if they had lost Dawson the Boy from their midfield as well, they would have been really screwed this season. So if they look at it from a perspective of Dawson the Boy is helping instead of selling him maybe t- for a hundred thousand. Um, to M- I think it was MK Dons, wasn't it? They were looking at him. Um, were indeed, instead yeah. of maybe sell- selling them, selling them for a cut price deal, maybe he might help them get into Europe or something like that, and uh, and then that maybe kind of evens itself out and puts the club in a better position moving forward. So it's it is a tricky one. You have to try and kind of calculate it from all the different scenarios. Um, yeah, I like that comment. Have to do <laughs> huge credit for the stance on a banquet, one hundred percent. And it really, I think it laid laid down a marker a little bit in terms of how other other clubs can deal with with things as well i think what wasn't it they said that um he's not going on a trial you either you, if you think he's good enough you buy him this is our price pay it or leave it like and I, you have to yeah you give them a lot of credit for that because Absolutely. it is a brave move they could have you'd know they could have been like oh no way we're not paying that and, and done one so you have to give pats an awful lot of credit for, for being so strong in that position um and hopefully he lays out a marker for for the clubs uh in the league of ireland 100 percent yeah so, then, and- <laughs> Oh, sorry, were you saying something there? Yeah, I was just coming back to Kieran's uh, comment here. Obviously, it, it and yourself saying that he didn't he didn't have to trial, and Pat said he you either buy him or he doesn't trial. Like the likes of uh, James Brown from Draw to trialing with uh, Rovers. Yes, yeah. that's that was uh, a shambles, isn't it? Captain trialing with Rovers. Um, especially yeah, yeah, especially the fact that he's kind of gone to the under twenty threes and stuff as well. He's like twenty twenty three now. It wasn't yeah. mad in that move at all. I think like yeah, I don't know. Strange, he's going somewhere where he's going to be playing at that age like yeah but you never know like he could obviously do well to under 23s then progress maybe to league well league one starting team um or a rove you know you never know really with these players yeah. um no he's doing he's done well there like he probably backed himself to, to do well and break into the team because yeah, he's a super super player so but in terms just in terms of the actual move itself it, it, did, it did seem like a strange one um yeah, I don't know. It was, it was a weird one. Lenny's saying that Devoy hated it in England when he went on trial at Watford a few years ago, so, so can see why he turned that MK on. I suppose, yeah, makes sense. Um, but I think, yeah, I think Devoy's getting to that stage where it is inevitable, though, isn't it? I think he uh, will go over eventually. Like, I don't, it could, it could, <laughs> could he end up like a, a Andy Lyons, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that when Lenny's, when Lenny's watching, don't be saying that. <laughs> You wouldn't be surprised at anymore though. Like it, it, it is getting to that stage. But geez, could you imagine the midfield of the boy, Mandrew, <laughs> uh, Jack Byrne, Richie Tell? So it'd be getting a bit silly at that stage now. I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully he, goes to, well. hopefully he goes to the UK and not to, to another Dublin club. Yeah, shells. I'll take my shells. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lenny, sorry, Kieran said you find players who know they have a chance of making it in the UK won't sign long term deals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. And especially when they're 16, 17 as well, you're not going to get players tied down on long deals if, if they're going to be going abroad. It's very difficult to do it anyway. Um, I'd say, yeah, you're going you're to get two years max. Um, I think Jamie Mullins, what's he? I'm not sure, he's, he's another one at Bowes actually that 
I think Brighton this are looking season, at him. Brighton are looking at him. Yeah, so I don't know if they're going to get much for him either. I'm not sure what his, his contract situation is. I know he signed a professional deal, but I'm not sure in terms of how long he's left on it or anything. Um, Shamrock Rovers had a first with Bazunu to City and Liam Scales and Celtic. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Bazunu one was, was a super deal. I think it was what 500,000 and then. As well as that, it's every is that every Ireland appearance they get another hundred grand or something like that. I think there's yeah, something in the like that, that as well. So they're making bank off him. I think it's for his first ten caps to get like a hundred grand per cap, so it's like a million quid. Um, which he's pretty closed in on ten caps now at this stage already. Yeah, it is it's gonna be an interesting one that um that uh, battle for the first choice Irish goalkeeping spot. Because I still yeah. think Kelleher is just as good, really, but he's just not getting as much game time. Hopefully, he can play yeah. now in the, the Carabao Cup final. I think he's been told he's playing in that anyway, so it'll be good to see him. Kind no of... reason for him not to like. Exactly, exactly yeah. So he played against Chelsea already this season in the Premier League and, and did well as well. So, um, uh, so yeah, there's no reason for for Kelleher not to play. And then Travers as well. You forget about him; he's done unbelievable for for Bournemouth. It looked like they're going to get promoted as well. So, be another Premier League goalkeeper. Um, who's our third choice at the moment? So, um, but we'll get we'll get we'll jump into the interesting element, start getting into the interesting prediction parts anyway. Uh, so we'll start off, Liam. I'll, I'll ask you, I think this is kind of a no brainer to be honest, but who's in the league? Who's in the Premier Division, Liam? <laughs> you know, what? I've been hanging around the Longford lads too much, and um, I've been told they look very well. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to. I think Derek are gonna gonna pip it this year. You know, I think at, like with the recruitment they've done, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be down to the wire. I think it's gonna be very interesting. Um, yeah. I, I think I just I think Derry they've done well in their recruitment and their businesses, but they've been smart. Um, and uh, Gary Gary from uh, Longford Media Team, I'm gonna side with him and I'm gonna go with Derry. I'm gonna go with Derry for the league. <laughs> I just can't see it. I I I think they, I think they'll be in the top three, no doubt about it, hundred percent. But I just don't see how anyone can look past Shamrock Rovers. I just don't. They're just such a they're such a very set team, Um like they haven't been through any kind of periods of transition. They haven't needed to. Only brought in two players, but it's Jack Byrne and it's Andy Lyons. Like, it's an unbelievable win though for them. And um, they haven't really lost anyone of, of too much significance. Um. Like if you look at this, if you look at the team, you've you've Richie Tell, you've Danny Mandrew, you've Graham Burke, you've Jack Byrne, you've Chris McCann, Gary O'Neill, you've I'm probably forgetting people here as well, but like the, the strength and depth in that team is just absolutely ridiculous, and it's something the League of Ireland's not really seen before that much quality. Um, if you, you're looking at Andy Lyons coming in, competing with obviously Joey O'Brien left to to go to Shells as a coach and bringing in one of the best full-backs in the country in our Irish under 21 international as his replacement and it's kind of learning from Ronan and Finn week in week out maybe trade like in the right wing back position because it is a new position for Andy Lyons it will be it could take a bit of adjusting to that new role for him so Ronan and Finn maybe will start the season there and take some time for Lyons to adapt but could you be learning from any a better professional in that position than Ronan and Finn there's not many better professionals in the League of Ireland than him uh, oh, they're just so good I just can't see past yeah. them to be honest. I wish I could, but I can't. <laughs> in my, in my, I'm gonna just ask you this though. Obviously, their keeper is kind of getting on a bit. Should they have brought in a goalkeeper because he did make a few, few, few bloopers come to, come the season? Let yeah. a few, few howlers like there was obviously Brian, Brian Maher. There was obviously they could have went for Ed McGinty potentially Ed McGinty. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Um, That's who I would have gone for. Yeah, yeah, that could be that could be something that they. Could regret not getting a keeper, but he's very experienced. He might come back around. That's the only thing that's he's holding me back. He's from forty. Going. He's like I think he might be forty now. Actually, isn't he? I think Alan Manis. He's he's got on. Like he's, he is. Yeah. He is. Um. He is past his prime, hundred percent. And it is a good point because he did he did have a few holders last season, but still a very good goalkeeper, of course. But it is definitely a position I would have looked at if I was Sean McGrovers. And I, I, as you said, Ed McGinty would have been. He's kind of. The, I think he might go next season. I think that might be the natural um progression for his career. Um. I think it'd be a super signing, but yeah, you're right. I think I think Adam Manis is probably he is past his sell by date, and he is still a top goalkeeper. But it is possibly an area of concern. And Brian Maher going to Derry, it's that's a super signing for them. Unbelievable goalkeeper. So yeah, it's it's a fair point. But uh, I think yeah, you're looking at who's in front of him: Pico Lopez, Lee Grace, yeah. and the likes. Not much. He might not have much to do. Like um, so yeah, I, I just I just can't pack, look past him. But I, I like your bravery with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just yeah. Obviously, I have Derry. Obviously, played Longford in a friendly, and they 
they, they took us to the to the cleaners really did they um, <laughs> bit of an insight happy days like. but you know uh, Derry are Derry unbelievable but, like Michael Duffy Patrick McLenny like if they can get them back to their best like I know it's it yeah. kind of gone stale for them at Dundalk last season Duffy is especially like if they can get Duffy going again he's I could be the best player in the league. So, yeah, Derry won't be a million miles away, no doubt about it. Manny Smith is a great sign as well from Pats. He's uh, got a lot of goals last season. So, yeah, he's a great, great sign as well. So, yeah, Derry, Derry it's, it's it's definitely a good show, but I think I think Rovers are just that little bit too strong. But it's great that we're having that debate because it, it seemed like it wasn't even going to be a debate for a while, but I'm, I'm glad there's something at least. It's Yeah, it's um, just like, I think, I think obviously, the Dundalk lads going up, obviously Duffy going back home, I think he, from what I've heard, <laughs> he looks ready, ready to go this season. Um, yeah, uh, he's a bit of a I'll point say, yeah, I'll say, uh, point you know to prove I mean? exactly, exactly. I meant um, to say that Duffy, yeah, hundred percent. He'll be hungry this season, definitely. Um, but yeah, I just think of Elvis for me. Uh, FAI Cup winners, what are you thinking, Longford? <laughs> <laughs> I love a cup run. Um, I think. If Derry don't win the league, I think Derry will win the cup. I think Derry will win either or really. Um, okay. I'd like to see Pats maybe try retain something like that. Um, I think the clubs with kind of European football might might struggle in the league, and then come the end, they might look for a cup run. So um, I'll probably go. I'll probably. I'm going to go Derry. Derry, if Derry don't win the league, I'd say Derry will win the cup. Okay. But you're backing them to do the double. Is that right? You're backing them to do the double. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who am I thinking? Oh, all the way. <laughs> Derry, yeah. Um, I fancy Shells for the cup. I don't know why. I don't know why. I fancy <laughs> Shells for the cup. <laughs> Damien Duff to win the cup. I don't know. I can see him lifting it. I'm not even smiling while he lifts it. I don't know. Like, do you know what I mean? I can see it. I can picture it now. <laughs> Uh, no, I think I think Shells could have. A, I just think if they they could get a nice nice little run in the cup, I think a uh, little mid table finishing and and then and then concentrate on the cup. I think Shells could could be a dark horse for the for the FEI Cup. I don't know. I don't know why. Don't ask me. It's just a feeling. It's a good feeling. No boys. Uh, <laughs> Dan Carr. Dan Carr goes on a Dan roll. Carr leading the line. Quality striker. Um, who are you thinking to win the first division, Liam? I think. It's just, I was actually looking at this for a while because this is really difficult. Like. It's 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 one of the seasons where it's going to be so hard to kind of judge really who who. But uh, if I was to go anyone, I'd probably be Waterford with uh, Ian Morris. I think yeah, they have the even their business they've done. I'd say Ian Morris, even though I'd love to say Longford, <laughs> but um, I think Longford will be up there. Um, yeah, I do think, I think they lost a couple of big players. What Longford did in there? They just lost. They a did. We of lost a few to your lads. Your lads, yeah. shells. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think Waterford. Waterford would probably be the favourites. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think I I'd probably agree. To be honest with you, I was just, in terms of they've made a couple of nice signings, as you said. Um, but in terms of their departures, is the big one. They've only really lost uh, John Martin. Apart from that, they've kept most of the squad from last season. Phoenix Patterson, Junior Quitterna, all ready to go. This year, I was impressed by them last year, especially under Berkham. I think Morris will be able to get the best out of them as well. He's been there. He's done it in the first division. He's won it twice now. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think, yeah, I think Waterford will have just have that little bit of know-how with Morris leading them. But it, it could be tight. I think, I don't think to be a few up there. I think Cork have done a few, have made a few nice signings as well. Um, I don't think they'll be a million miles away. I think it'd be better. Galway as well, always up there with John Caulfield as well. I think, I think they'll be, they'll be strong again. Um, but yeah, Longford again. You never know. You never know. I think your man Christian Magarussen, is that how you say it? I think yeah. he could be. I'm hopefully it's a feel good story for the year. Um, <laughs> and was he here for two or three years with injury? I think wasn't yeah, it something mad like that? Two, Great two story, ACLs. Like. Yeah, he's Crazy, only still twenty two like. as well. So it's a, it's a madness. Yeah, like he's mad like yeah. So he, he he's a good player if they can keep him fit. Like and he can score goals. Um. So yeah, it's it's gonna be a really really interesting season in the in the first division. Looking forward to it. Um, Bray as well, like a Bray Cavendish, whoever it is these days, <laughs> won't, probably won't be many miles away either. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to know. But yeah, I think have Water, to say, have to say have to uh, Longford Longford taking um, Ryan Graydon, obviously uh, Dylan yes. Dylan Barnett and um, and obviously uh, Darren Craven. I think they've they've really impressed me from what I've seen. I think. Ryan Graydon's going to be a fabulous player for Longford. Obviously, he came through yeah. at Bowes, didn't he? I think. He did indeed. 
Yeah, he's a good um, player. Yeah. So yeah, I think we've we, we've made a few steals, if you ask me. So um, I'm hoping they can produce. I'm sure they will. Yeah, hundred percent. It's gonna be it's, it's so because it, what is it? First goes up and then it's up second, third, fourth, and fifth. So you imagine long for definitely get one of those spots anyway, surely. Yeah, but um, then if you go back to it, then like Cork, Cork, like Cork City, like, yeah, like, <laughs> like it, it's actually such a difficult league to predict. Because last year it was difficult to predict Bar Shales, who were just that bit better than everybody else, but it was still really difficult to predict everyone else. This year it's kind of a free for all nearly, but um, yeah, it's gonna be really, really tricky to know. Who do you think the top goal scorer in the Premier Division is gonna be? Who's going to be the top goal scorer in the Premier Division? Yeah, Ooh, I'm going to go Owen Doyle. I think Owen Doyle's going to going to be a great signing for Pat. So I don't Read know. my <laughs> mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was trying to I was trying to think of the candidates, right? So obviously you're looking at Owen Doyle probably being the, the leading candidate. Matty mm-hmm. Smith maybe at Derry possibly. Um, you're looking at Shamrock Rovers like a Graham Burke because uh, Graham Burke has five goals in him. He probably score five against UCD or something. He always loves five goals in one <laughs> game. Uh, Rory Gaffney, Aaron Green, they're kind of rotated a little bit at Rovers, aren't they? So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sean my thing Boyd, with Rovers, Karen, no. My thing with Rovers is they always spread the goals. There's never like you know what I mean. You can't yeah. really like. I think yeah. I just think Owen Doyle, like, Ma- Mandrew will get ten, Burn will get ten. Like you know, it's kind of sped around. Where Owen Doyle could mm-hmm. hit twenty. Like mm-hmm. if they can keep Owen Doyle fit, I think Owen Doyle's the no brainer, hundred percent. I think um, I'm a bit worried worried about uh, Bowes is striking. Obviously they have promise. Um. Ryan Cassidy. Yeah, it's just sure. will they will they hit the heights that Georgie got last season? That's no. the main worry. You know what I mean? Like they've no, a lot of there's going to be so. a a lot of weight on Promise's shoulders. I think for this season, um, to kind of hit the ground running, obviously, and score the goals. But <laughs> we never know. We will have to wait and see. Yeah, I think Bose's strength is the players that they have just behind the strikers. So you're looking at Chris Twardick. You're looking at Ali Coote. Looking at Liam Burt three very good players and they have junior as well uh who could maybe start up front sometimes but i think i, I thought junior was poor last season to be honest uh maybe keith long can kind of get the best out of him again but uh i think yeah that twardic cute and burp trio is very very strong and um, but yeah the, the missing that kind of I, I don't know i haven't really seen much of ryan cassidy to be honest he could hit the ground runner i think it might take him a while though to be honest i think he's on a lot of accrington there for a while scored a couple Um, so yeah for, you just never know don't you yeah. in the league of you just you just never know what they're going to be like um, that's the same with a lot of bows and signs, a lot of loans as well. So it's just it's just really tricky to know what what's going to happen with them. Um, hopefully, it's not a, a bastion signing, but um, hopefully they can. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was a mad disaster, signing. absolute disaster. <laughs> who who are you going for for player of the year? Premier Division. Player of the year. You know these are tough questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Mm. Ooh. I'm gonna say uh, Jack Brown. Jack Brown. Yeah, it's 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 a boring answer, but it is one that's that's definitely uh safe option. Definitely <laughs> safe option, exactly. Yeah. I was thinking maybe a Pico Lopez if if Rovers do add the back, they're kinda of, not leaking many goals. He could be in with a shout. Um maybe a Michael Duffy if he if he gets going at, at Derry. He always can score goals, get a lot of assists. He'll always be in the conversation as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, when a player of Jack, it might take Jack Burn a while to get going, I think. But with a player of his ability, he shouldn't really be in the League of Ireland, to be honest, at his age. Like he should be in the Championship with his ability, to be honest. And um, once he gets going, it's it's going to be it's hard to stop him. But yeah, it's, it's such a boring answer, Jack Burn, isn't it? It's such a boring <laughs> answer, but it is, it is probably the, the one to go for. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it could. I, yeah, it's it's gonna be. It could also. I, Maddie Smith, maybe. I don't know. We never. You know, um, it's hard to know. Chris Jordan Forrester. McEnough, Jordan McEnough could do well. I know Jordan a lot McEnough about him. To see him actually. To see him. I'm actually really interested to see how Shells line up this season, formation wise, and, and in midfield and stuff. Because obviously they still have Lonnie there, they've Mark Coyle, they've Durvin. Uh, McEnough is a midfielder, centre midfielder as well, isn't he? He is indeed. Yeah. Um, and then if and then if someone else I'm going to talk about in a minute. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how she has on up. But yeah, I think I think Jack Burns is 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 the right answer. Um, who, pick pick a one to watch for me, Liam. Who who do you reckon who's one to watch this season? Um, first division. division. I'm, first division. I'm going to say <laughs> Ryan Graydon. Um, uh, Premier Division. Oof. 
tough, tough, tough. I'm gonna go with a. Uh, I'm gonna go with promise. I think promise. Yeah, yeah. Good he show. could, he could, he could have a lot to promise. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, promise isn't a bad show because I think he got a lot of game time now, of course, and he could probably, he'll probably start this weekend. To be honest, uh, my one to watch this season. I'm gonna go for Jack Moylan at Chelsea. I think, I think he's a super sign. Uh, I think it's seven goals and 14 games for Wexford last season on loan from Bowes. Uh, left Bowes to join Shells. Actually, surprised Bowes didn't do more to keep him with Ross Tierney leaving. I think he plays in that Ross Tierney type role. Um, I think I think Jack Moylan could be one to watch for Shells this season. He's a very very good attacking midfielder. Um, he's looked really good. Twenty years old, great age coming into the side. I think I think Duff likes him as well. Um, Jamie Mullins is a good shout as well. Hundred percent. Um, it's a good shout. He's he's a baller as well. Yeah. If he, if, yeah, I think he, what is he? He's 17, 16, 17. seventeen. No, he's yeah. very very young, but. Uh, so I'm not sure how much game time he'll get, but he'll definitely make an impact 100%. But Jamie, so yeah, Jack Moylan for me, that's my one to watch for, for 2022, 100%. I think, I think Jordan, if Jordan, J- Jordan McEnough hits the ground running and kind of gets his fitness, I think he could. Has he had any troubles, hasn't he? He has, yeah. He's only kind of coming back. Um, he, I think he was out for about a year or some, so with Arsenal. Yes, um, he's yeah. only coming back there. Obviously, now he's gone on loan to kind of get minutes in the legs. Um, I think he could potentially, but that's 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 if he's fit. You know what I mean? If he can, yeah. if he can get there, and um, hopefully he can. I think he could be a massive player for League of Ireland. Could bring a lot of eyes as well to League of Ireland. Um, yeah. Because is it is he has six months left on his deal at Arsenal, doesn't he? And he's also on loan for six months. So hopefully yeah. Shells can can stop him up or something. If well, I'd say if he if he does well, he could probably get a move in, in Championship League one. That's probably yeah. his plan. I'd say. Um, if he does well at which else, but we'll see how that goes on anyway. But I think he could be a great signer for the first half of the season. Um, we'll move into our, our game week one predictions. Um, obviously, we do have our prediction table, so these predictions will matter uh, come the end of the year. Uh, we'll start off at Oriel Park with Dundalk playing host to Derry City, a cracking game there. Uh, difficult to predict as well. Uh, we have the other lads' predictions in as well, so we'll go with them. We'll say them after. But Liam, who, who do you think will take that one? Um, who's going to take this one? Uh, obviously, Derry. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think Duffy could be on the score sheet here as well. I think yeah, he's going to have a... going back to Oriel in his first game back to <laughs> McIlhenny as well. That's it. I just Huge. think yeah, Patching I think obviously course. Dundalk have new manager, new players. Um, I think Derry. I think this could be two 0 Derry, two 0 Derry. That's my prediction. What's yours? Show. Um. Yep, I'm gonna go for a Derry win as well, maybe one nil. Uh, I just think, yeah, as, as you say, I think Dundalk are gonna take a little while to get going. I think they will come good. Dundalk, they'll be tough to beat as well. But I think Derry might just have that little bit more just to get over the line in this one. Uh, it'll be a great start to the season as well. A huge confidence boost. Uh, Dundalk against Strahada last week as well looked a little bit. They're gonna take oh. a bit of time, I think, to get going. I think. Um, so yeah, I'd fancy, I'd fancy Derry for this. In terms of the other, the other lads as well, Griffin Socko both said a draw. And Tyg agreed with us, Liam. He went for an away win as well. So those are the predictions for Dundalk versus Derry City. Make sure to get your predictions in in the comments, guys. We'll keep an eye on them as well. Um, here we go. Talk of Park. RT live on RT this Friday evening. Huge, huge Dublin derby to kick off the season. Shelburne playing host to St. Patrick's Athletic. I am backing the draw here. I think it's going to be a tight affair. Very, very tight affair. I think... A little bit of a nervy one. It's gonna be so interesting to see how Duff kind of has his team going. I think, uh, I think, uh, uh, Pats might take a little while as well, maybe to get going under Clancy. I think they will come very good, and they have. I think Owen Doyle might open the score here, scoring here, but I think Shells will equalise. And I think it's gonna be a one-one draw. That's my prediction for this one. See, I was at, at one stage. I was going towards a Pats way away win. Obviously, we had to send these these uh, predictions in beforehand. So at first, I was going for an away win. Obviously, I just think Pat's a very strong uh, side, and obviously coming off their cup cup run last year. But then yeah. I was thinking, it's in Talca Park. Uh, obviously, the fans will be up for it. The fans will be buzzing. I think I'd say the fans. The fans will be going mental. I'd say the fans will get really get behind Duff as well. Duff's gonna play first time really, his first game. Um. So I think the fans are going to play a massive, massive role, and I think they'll get a one-one, something like that. I think they will get a result here at Shelburne. 
I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think we were the only ones who actually went for, for Shells to get something from this game. I think we both went for the draw, and then Griff, Tyg, and Sokka all went for an away win, uh, which is interesting. I'd like to see the, the, the bookies odds on that one. Um, I'd, I'd say they probably have Pats just about, but I think I think Shells, especially at Talker Park, first night of the season, first night back in the Premier, yeah. it's going to be first tough game to, on to be so up for it. Like, yeah, first they're going to be TV. absolutely straight at it, and I think... Uh, I think I think the draw is is a fair show for that one. Uh, next up, Finn Harps versus Draw had a potentially um, two sides who could be down towards the bottom fighting for to get out of that playoff spot. Potentially two sides that might be looking over their shoulder at each other at different points during the season. Um, for me, this one has a draw written all over it. In Bali Buffet, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah. draw written all over it. Oh, I was I was going towards a draw myself, and then I realised yeah. it was obviously up and <laughs> up and done. He got up in Valley Buffet, and we've all we always speak about this ourselves, saying it's such a tough place a to nasty, go. To. Nasty, nasty <laughs> way. You, place you, to go. Yeah, you yeah. really wouldn't. You really would not want to go there in the first game of the season. Um, so I think I think Harps will nick this one 0 or something. I just I think it's going to be a dire watch. To be fair, but Harps uh, started the season off really well last year as well. It's be interesting to see if they can do that again. And um, I think Yo Yo Maddie's going to be a great signing for them. I really do think he's a top top player. Go back two seasons ago at UCD, he hit nearly twenty goals and in, in twenty games in the COVID season. Uh, something along those lines. Uh, obviously last year at Shells kind of pushed out to the left at times and things like that. It wasn't really. Uh, probably didn't make best use of him. Probably wasn't the best move for him, and um, because I think he's number nine. He just plays through the centre. He scores goals. I think under Ollie Horgan, Ollie Horgan will make him the main man. Obviously, they they lost Adam Foley, they lost Sean Boyd, they lost Tunde Owalabi. Yo Yo Maddie's the number nine. He's going to score the goals this season. I think he's going to have a really really good year. Um, I think yeah, I think Ollie Horgan will get the best from one hundred percent. And I think Drogheda obviously lost a lot of big big players. Um, so yeah, it's going to be. It's, I think both of these sides probably will be around that bottom half of the table towards the end of the season and this game I think I think draw to be honest yeah I was just coming back to obviously draw there and you was mentioning that it's actually crazy to think draw only got 50k for Killian Phillips to Crystal yeah. Palace <laughs> it's, it's it's absolutely Nuts. mental I'm just laughing here at the comments <laughs> so yeah. the <laughs> let's see uh the soccer at the house jersey what do you think year on a year on and still no sign absolute joke absolute joke he has to get on that like i was nearly getting shocking. i got him in chris kindle and i just nearly nearly getting it from <laughs> <laughs> foley return i forgot about that actually yeah yeah it is yeah. it is that'll be interesting actually um that's an, an interesting element Spa soccer to spoof <laughs> i have to get that has a ring to it that has a ring to it it's finn park a tough place to go didn't know that not gonna lie <laughs> it's only mentioned five times per episode uh <laughs> We'll move on to a bit of a no-brainer, to be honest. Probably the one no-brainer of the weekend. Shamrock Rovers versus UCD. You don't ever like to call a game a no-brainer, but this this is as good as done, isn't it? Oh god, yeah. UCD might as well not show up to this person. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna get hammered, I think. Yeah, I think it has five, six now written all over, to be honest. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> it's a rover score early, like Oh yeah, I think the Rovers will probably spread. Rovers will definitely just spread the old uh, goals around, uh, and obviously yeah. with the fans back as well, I think uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be a route. To be honest, it's not... I, I can see it. I can see that. Yeah, it's a route. It's a tough, tough start for UCD, uh, and it's going to be a serious. I think they'll be enthusiastic. They've a couple of good players: Colin Whelan, Liam Kerrigan, and um, a few others as well. But it's, it's a tough gig for them. It's a really tough gig for them this year. I think. Um, yeah, I think this could be five or six to be honest. If Robert score early, uh, yeah, if, yeah, I think it <laughs> be good to see the new lads, obviously, uh, for Rovers, but yeah, uh, I think it would be a yeah, cr- could be a cricket score to be honest. Yeah, it's a nice, there's... nice little way to start the season because you're looking at their kind of title challengers, uh, Rovers, you're looking at Derry traveling to Dundalk, you're looking at Pats traveling to Shells, really tough games to start the season. Rovers kind of have a nice way to ease into it as well, so definitely a, a nice way to start the, the campaign for them. Uh, Especially um, coming so. off the, the back of the President's Cup, like that was kind of a high intensity game. I'd say they'll yeah. be ready to go from minute one, which probably isn't the great for the students, but uh, <laughs> it's not, it could be a long night. It could be a very, very long night. Hopefully, make a game of it, but it's, it's hard to see. It's hard to see, to be honest. Uh, 
The final game of the weekend, the Premier Division, um, is on Saturday evening, I believe. Sligo Rovers playing host to Bohemians. This will be a very, very good game. Uh, tough one to call as well. Um, by the way, sorry, everyone, everyone, Ty Griff and Sako well went for a home win for Rovers as well, by the way. Um, if this one, Sligo Bows, actually can't remember what I picked. Oh, yes, I went for a Sligo Rovers win here. Um, I just think Bows could take a little while to get going this season. I know... Uh, mm-hmm. I think you saw me said that you weren't best, you weren't overly impressed with what you saw. I think did Bows lose to Gleep North as well? I'm not sure if that was yeah, like in the second did, string yeah. side or something, but like it's not, yeah. not a great sign. Like they did um, lose to Gleep in uh, Leinster Senior League, I believe they are. Um, yeah, well, it wasn't crazy. when I saw it, when I did see Bows. No, I only saw them once, obviously. <laughs> they didn't impress me, and from what I did see, you wouldn't, you could, you would have, um. You wouldn't have known who was the Premier and First Division team from um, the friendly that I've seen. Um, yeah, I think. But then again, like Sly, I think these two clubs could struggle this season. Um, yeah. Sligo have obviously lost John Mann. They've obviously lost Johnny Kenny. They're two massive players at either end of the field. They obviously still have Greg um, and Buck. Gary and Buck, Buckley and stuff. Yeah, yeah, which are two two experienced lads, but. The goal might not get a full year out of them either because they're both kind of getting on a bit as well. A few injury troubles. That's what I mean. Like then you, well. you then look at the goals Johnny did score and what he did contribute. To the like the pace in behind. Obviously, they've made some new signings. Um, but are they really like you know? It's just, you never know. You never know. Yeah. It's going to be. I think tough Aiden Keener is a yeah. good sign up front. I think they got him in from Falkirk. He he's worked at Liam yeah. Buckley before. Pat, I think he could do well. And um, so that maybe takes some of the burden off replacing kind of Johnny Kenny and stuff but at John Mahan as you said huge huge blow to lose him uh, and John yeah it's 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 gonna be a t- it could be a tough year for Sligo even bringing in I know that, I think it was a Paddy Kirk they brought in one or two mm-hmm. decent players but nothing really that's kind of overly inspiring that makes you think they're gonna crack into the top three top four really uh or to put any sort of title challenge in place so yeah I, th- I think um I think I think Sligo will have enough here I think Greg Bulger and the likes will get them over the line here and have that little bit more than Bowes probably at the start of the campaign, but uh, I think it's going to take Bowes a while to get going. Really, I think this we've always seen with Bowes, they're great at replacing players, replacing players, replacing players. I think this could be the year. This is funny, this might be clipped up, I might look like a mug, but this could be the year that Bowes struggled to replace the players. I think Keith Buckley, I think Keith Ward, I think Rob Cornwall were huge, huge parts of that dressing room, and to replace that, even the off the pitch is nearly so so difficult to do. I think Keith Buckley in that is the heart was the heartbeat of that midfield for years. Bringing in Jordan Flores, he's not really the same type of player. He's a deep line playmaker, similar to Devoy. They're not you know kind of box to box ball winning midfielders. I kind of worry for Bowes a little bit in the center of the park. Um and then at the back, it's all kind of loan signings and stuff. So this is impossible to know, but it's, it could take a while for them to gel and stuff. So, yeah, I think I think, uh, I think think I fancy the home win here. I think Sligo got to a decent start. That's what I went for as well. Like um, Sligo, Sligo win, really. That's the way I see it, especially seeing Bowes in, uh, in pre-season. I also think Bowes, like how long will Ali Coot and the likes stay around? Like Ali Coot, I'm surprised he's even staying, to be honest, because he's a quality, quality player. He could, yeah. he could easily go back over to England or, you know what I mean, to the UK. Oh, I think it's yeah. just a matter of time. 100%. 100%. That's the only, the only the one thing about Bose is, as I was kind of mentioned earlier on, like the three behind the striker are very, very solid, like very good. Twardick, uh, Cute, and Bert. Be interesting to see if Twardick can like replicate what he was like with Bose before. Will he be the same player? It's hard to know. Um, but yeah, I think I think if they if, if, if they get an injury to birth or coot or somebody like that, I think they could be it could be a little bit of, a little bit of trouble to be honest. Um but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how Bowes get on this season. I think yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I think it could be a challenging year for Keith Long's side. Um we'll finish off the show with our with our weekly Irish players abroad segment. Um so this is when we go through kind of the Irish players playing abroad, obviously, and just looking at how they did maybe even the recent days. Um, so we'll start off with James McLean last night. He scored a goal and got an assist for Wigan in a 2-0 win. He's been very, very impressive this season. Playing in left back as well at times for Wigan, a left wing back, um, which is good for, for Stephen Kenny as well in terms of that's probably where he's going to play. If he has an Ireland future, that's where he's, he's going to be playing in that kind of left wing back role. We saw that out in Luxembourg and stuff where he played there. And he, do, he does all right there. He does a job. Um, always always does really well for Ireland, I think. 
Yeah, so, but he's flying in League One, and it looks like Wigan will be getting promoted this season. Uh, we'll be touching on Will Keane in a sec. But James McLean, uh, doing well so far? Yeah, it's good to see. He is one of them players, and I always say to yourself and the lads, <laughs> he's one of them players that just really frustrates me when I'm watching Ireland. But he always gives 100%, so you can't really complain. Um, he wears his heart on his sleeve as well, like he'll fight for the badge. Um, he's He is solid, but sometimes his crossing can be a bit off. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's I mean, he obviously doing well with Wigan. It's good to see. So hopefully, he'll be back in the championship. So that's more higher level. That's good for the Irish setup. Um, and obviously, it's good that he brought. He's obviously brought a, a pal over with uh, Jamie McGrath. So he's yeah, obviously Jamie, Jamie settling in, helping him settle in. I can only imagine. Um, so yeah, it'd be good. Good the Irish little connection there, at Wigan. 100%, 100%. Speaking of the Irish connection at Wigan, there is also Will Keane. Uh, he scored a 16th goal of the season at the weekend. It's actually a very impressive tally. He's not actually playing up front as either. He's kind of playing in the number 10 position. 16 goals. I know it's League One, but it's a very, very good um, tally. And he's been in Stephen Kenny's squad as of late. And with that much kind of goals, with that goal scoring kind of form, there's no reason to suggest why he should be taken out, really, is there? No, he's like as, yeah. absolutely. Why not? Like, even if he's around the squad, kind of, it's good for experience. Um, he'll only keep learning, learning his trade. He's he's young enough, isn't he? Or am I? Am I? Am I, I think he's off? 27, 28. I think. I think. Yeah. yeah. So he's not. He is one of those where, if there is a better option, a younger, better option. That's if Wilkins not going to be starting. It probably is. Maybe want to fa- phase him out and, and get in a younger player. I'd love but, to uh, see. Obviously, I'd love to see Evan Ferguson kind of in the background, even training or something with the. With the first team, if he gets more minutes, um, I think he yeah. could be a real, real future, future star for Ireland. Um, but yeah, Will Keane, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take him out personally. Keep him there, like unless, unless Ed Ferguson starts scoring left, right, and centre for Brighton, but probably won't. It's probably too early for him to be thrown into the deep end there, leading the line yeah. for Brighton. Yeah, probably a little bit a year. Maybe it's hard to know because Brighton, Brighton's striking options aren't the best. Uh, Danny Welbeck, Mopay, like he, there probably is an opportunity there for him, but possibly a loan move maybe in the next year or so might be the best course of action for him. Moving on to uh, Ireland's most promising left wing back or left back, uh, Joel Bacon. I'm just saying that because I know Tigs, Tigs watching. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he, he's actually done really well at the moment he's playing uh with cardiff at the moment and he scored a cracker for them there yesterday he scored two goals in the last four days from uh left wing back um which is a great option as well because uh, ender stevens on the way out probably he's in his 30s now james mclean on his way out so it's good to see that we have a kind of left back or a left wing back kind of coming through the ranks in joe big and then i think just tie you at our ever Adara Romola, <laughs> I think that's how you say it. I'm just saying that for, for Tiger. No, he, he's a big fan. Uh, yeah, but great to see a goal scoring and left wing back as well is, is great as well. But to be honest, I'm not going to lie, I don't know much about this fella. I only um, saw him he, today. I haven't heard I, of him. I probably know more about uh, Tayo from uh, listening to Tig, and Tig speaks very highly of him. So um, he only got, he got on recently, actually, against in the, in the FA Cup, I believe, Tayo. Might be, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so yeah, he's another one coming through the ranks if he decides to play for Ireland. It's a bit of a shame that, um, that I was talking to Ty about him there, and it's it's a bit of a shame that your man Tyreek Mitchell's playing that left back for Palace in 2021. He's just unbelievable, like, so it's, yeah, it's good. Really tough for him to break into that Palace side. Uh, because saying as well, it'd be ideal if one of them was a right back because Joe Ward's getting on a little bit as well, so it would have been perfect to have one of them start in instead of him. But sure, look, what can you do? Uh, I think you're answer 20. Is that, I think that's Will Keane, he's talking yeah, about. Will Keane, yeah, yeah, I got it. You know, he's at all. <laughs> he doesn't look that uh, old. He's in, his, he's in his prime, he's in his prime. <laughs> Joe, his twin brother is Michael Keane at Everton. Do you know that? Yeah, Fun yeah, fact. yeah, yeah. Uh, Moving on to Danny Grant, who scored again for Huddersfield's B team. Um, and I was just looking through the, the Twitter replies to his goal. A lot of Huddersfield's, fa- Huddersfield's fans are very, very impressed by him and they're screaming in front to get an opportunity in the first team. And I'm surprised that he hasn't already. I think he's 20 21, isn't he? Um, he saw his ability in the League of Ireland, he's a top, top player, um, as a, offers a lot, um, very quick, has a goal in him, very, very good winger. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think he's definitely championship quality, isn't he? Definitely, like if he stays fit, I'm pretty sure he went over and had a few injuries, obviously. And it's very tough, very tough for a young lad to kind of go over to the 
to another country, even the UK. I know Sonia Stone's throw away, but to kind of relocate, um, very yeah. tough for a young player. That's why you see a lot of them coming back. So he's obviously kind of adjusted now, and that's why he's kind of reaping the rewards and he's finding his form, which is it's great to see an Irish lad, like especially a League of Ireland lad, over yeah. over across the way, starting to show 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 how good the League of Ireland is. Personally, definitely. 100%, 100%, and it's just, yeah, one of many. Um, but we'll finish off, obviously, what you were talking about Will Keane there before, and kind of like talking about players that could be coming in to replace him. I think Michael Obafemi is starting to score goals at Swansea. Aaron Connolly has scored recently for Middlesbrough. Um, I think they're probably two players that, that are at a decent age that need to be coming into the Irish squad. I think Obafemi in particular, um, if he has his attitude problems sorted out, I think that was an area of concern for a little while. Um and he was missing out on, on squads and stuff like that. But I don't think anyone was doubting his ability. At Southampton, he was coming off the bench, scoring against Chelsea, scoring against Man United. You can tell he's a very, very good player, good striker. Uh, if you start to bang them in, and he needs to be playing regularly, so it's good that he got into Swansea in the Championship. If he can start banging them in on a consistent basis for them, and a similar enough situation with Aaron Connolly as well. Who, oh, I'm not the biggest fan of Aaron Connolly, to be honest. I think, I think he is a, probably Championship max player. That I don't think he'll ever be probably they're harsh to write him off but i don't i don't think he's he's a Premier League quality player like but um hopefully he proves me wrong but yeah i, th- I think obafemi and Connolly probably should be in the next squad and especially if they're kind of nations league games things like that you'd probably rather have the younger lads in instead of the likes of your will Keynes and players like that as well so good to give kind of the younger lads a chance to gel and, and get to know each other a bit and form those partnerships etc yeah, so it, for me, this is a bit of a tough one because obviously Obafemi, we know Kenny, Kenny hasn't put him in one of his squads. He's kind of put him into the under twenty ones. Um, so it's a bit of a strange one. I don't think Kenny will probably bring Obafemi in personally, just because of the previous kind of misdemeanor, misdemeanors, everything like that. Then Aaron Conley just frustrates me. It feels like he's kind of got too big for his boots after the Spurs goals, and he's he's. He's still living off them. Like you can see, there is a player. There is a player there. Like you know what I mean. It's just 100%. like even when he's playing for Ireland, he's holding the ball up and he's just holding on to it too long. Or he's, you know what I mean. He's not letting letting it go, letting it fly, letting it slide even. Um, when like we, I can't remember the game. He really frustrated me. It was there recently, and one of our strikers were running through, and he just held on to the ball. <laughs> it's just like he makes the wrong decision. Yes, yeah, just, yeah. Oh. he's always at that. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a, a set of streaking, doesn't it? Yeah, and obviously, yeah, I just think, oh, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know about them two personally. I think you'd probably be better off letting Evan Ferguson and uh, Johnny Kenny kind of build up their reputation and score goals and do all that, and then bring them them in when they're of a suitable age. Um, or more than because, like, we we obviously know Johnny, he's a lovely lad, he seems yeah. like he's kind of. Down, he's very down to earth as well. Um, more so, like you know, what I mean, they've they've kind of went off. They've went off to the, the, the other extreme. Yeah, um, you see, so see Connolly's tattoo, like it's just that. <laughs> oh, like I, I don't want to criticize people for their own personal decisions and stuff. But that tattoo is shocking. <laughs> like it is shocking. It's so vain and all. Like it's just, oh, it just tells you so much about him as as a fella. Like. Uh, yeah, so I think I think we probably have we probably have better I have younger options coming through kind of younger prospects yeah. that will yeah. want to play for Ireland and be hungry to play for Ireland and put on a good performance more so than Aaron Connolly. Well, I could be wrong yeah. here about Aaron Connolly, and I hope he does come back and kind of prove us wrong. Yeah, because um, they're still young; they're still in their early twenties, so it isn't the case of probably writing them off yet. But yeah, it's hard to know, isn't it? What the best course of action is really, uh, Kieran. Burke agreeing with you they're saying two players with with bad attitudes um which has been evident so far hopefully they can kind of turn that around and and get um get it's very hard as well because you can kind of see focused. where you can kind of see why they do end up with bad attitudes kind of like obviously similar enough with Delhi Ali like you know what I mean Delhi Ali was unbelievable for Spurs I know I know Burke I was a Spurs fan um I know um Matt like he was massive and then he kind of Hit that, hit that peak. You know what I mean. And everything yeah. he was in the England squad, he's scoring nine crackers. Um, they're just giving too much money at a young age, really, when they go over to the UK. Yeah. I think personally as well, which doesn't help. 
Yeah, no, it's it kind of like because Aaron Connolly burst onto the scene with the goals against Spurs. Obafemi burst onto the scene with the goals yeah. against United and Chelsea. Maybe they kind of believed their own hype too soon and thought they were the best teams Absolutely. in the world. And, yeah. and then they kind of stopped working as hard as the next guy and stuff. So that that definitely plays a factor kind of psychologically. And it's only, it, it is maybe tough for them. And, and uh, yeah, Obafemi needs a second chance. And you, you'll always be willing to give people an opportunity if, if they earn it. And if they're working hard in the championship and, and getting the games in and, and scoring goals, there's no reason for them not to, to turn it around. Um, the driving, the diving is what drives me mad with Connolly. A terrific, yeah, have to agree. I'm not, I'm, I can't, I'm not much better myself in Sunday League now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting paid for that. So. <laughs> um, Lenny says this is actually a great show. Connolly will be at Rovers by the time he's 27. I can actually picture that for some reason. I can see Aaron Connolly playing for Shamrock Rovers. Like, I can see that for some reason. <laughs> he's gonna be, at, gonna be at Rovers and be a social media influencer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Hopefully not, though. I did like there is a player in there. Yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd like to think he, he, yeah, he gets Zach together or whatever. But um, we'll see how the rest of the season plays out. It'll be a big tale to see how he does at Middlesbrough under Chris Wilder as well. Um, competing with Balagoon actually for game time probably uh, at, at Middlesbrough. So that'll be that'll be interesting to see. Um, he needs some knuckle down anyway. Um, but guys, uh, we do have our. I do have a season prediction and a Premier Division table prediction video coming out at six o'clock tomorrow. So make sure to. Uh, this is a quick reminder for that. That'll be out tomorrow evening ahead of the new season starting. And um, this Cosh Optimistic Live show will be every Wednesday seven till eight. And um, so yeah, make sure to to set a reminder for that as well. And um, we did. I really enjoyed being back. Class season two episode one. Liam really really enjoyed that. It's been fun. It's been fun. I uh, have a little uh, little prediction thing that's coming back. If you might, you fewies might remember that little uh, social media content. So I've gathered our predictions for the Dublin Derby, which I'll be dropping tomorrow. So yeah, looking forward to getting them back up and running. <laughs> 100%. So make sure to follow us on all our socials. They're all in the description down below. Um, we really, really appreciate you all tuning in. Um, it means the absolute world to us. Thank you so much. Any likes and if on the video uh, or if you haven't already, do subscribe as well. It is much, much appreciated if you can do that. It helps us out a lot. want to try and hit that 3K mark as soon as we can on YouTube. So yeah, all your support. So, so appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next week. Catch you in a bit. Cheers, lads.